All right, welcome. So today we're going to get started by just kind of going over some basic terminology and defining this term statistics here that we are trying to learn. All right, now I think we answer this question. We may define statistics differently, whether we ask the question, what, what is statistics or what are statistics? Right, usually the first thing that people kind of think about or where they jump to, what, what are statistics? There's some kind of numbers or some kind of, some kind of facts, right? Something that we calculate from a data set, right? So we're using data here. We're, we're calculating stuff, right? That's what statistics are. But the, the field or the study of statistics, statistics as a discipline, right, is, can be defined like this. This is just kind of a loose definition that I made up. And, and I like to add in this thing. It's, it is a science in, in most aspects, right? the science of learning from data, or the science of reasoning with data. Right? But some aspects, we do, do kind of blur the line here and maybe become an art in some sense. Right, so we know what statistics is as a field. We know what statistics are. What is statistics not? All right, a lot of people just think, okay, it's just another math class. All right, but I would argue that it, it's not exactly math. All right, we'll use a lot of math and we'll use probability. All right, but it's, it's really more of a mindset. It's more of a way of thinking. Right, thinking analytically, all right? So that's how we want to think here. All right, so what exactly can we do with statistics? All right, well, we know we're using data. All right, here's, what we, here's the main focus of what we can do with statistics, all right? Number one, I've got a data set. We just want to make sense of it, all right? So whether that's just organizing it, whether that's making it presentable to someone else, right? That's part of statistics. Or maybe we can kind of try to answer some questions. All right, now statistics, we can usually identify trends, identify issues, and use as some sort of evidence for an argument we may have. Right, so statistics might tell us there's something going on. But what statistics usually can't do, and where whatever, whatever field or whatever subject you might be an expert in, Right, this is where your, your field of study comes in. Right, statistics can tell us there's something going on, but it can't always say why. Right, and if it has identified a problem, right, it can't always tell us how to fix it. Right, but statistics is what we can use here as, as evidence. All right, so let's sum all that up. All right, so for any Harry Potter fans here, right, the way just your common muggle might justify an argument, use some anecdotal evidence. Oh, my friend did this, or my friend's cousin heard about this, right? Or their own opinion. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but sometimes we want to make sure we have some sort of data to back that up. All right? Instead of muggles, we want to be wizards, right? We want to use data, we want to use statistics to back up our argument. All right, so the study of statistics is really broken into two main areas. Right, we've got descriptive statistics over here, and we've got inferential statistics over here. All right, descriptive statistics is where we'll start. Okay, descriptive statistics are different things that we can do in order to take a data set and make it presentable, have it make sense to someone else. Right? It also deals with the collection of data. So collecting, organizing, summarizing, all this stuff that we have to do to make a nice clean data set that we can show somebody. Right? There's ways we can do this graphically with some charts, graphs, things like this. We can also do this numerically. Right? We can use numbers to describe a data set. Right? The other branch of the study of statistics is inferential statistics. Okay? This consists of methods like hypothesis tests and confidence intervals. Okay? We will start with descriptive statistics, and we'll see inferential statistics down the road. 
right? but it's good to get like a bird's eye view, a big picture view of where we're going. Right, so what are inferential statistics? The basic idea of inferential statistics is we use what we have at our disposal, a sample. We use inference techniques to then draw conclusions or generalize or infer about the population that that sample came from. All right, so what are these words, populations and samples? Well, suppose I have a question in mind. The large group that will answer that question for me is my population. Okay, so if you're able to get to that entire population, and you have a question in mind, well, maybe you can do something like a census. All right, I'm recording this in 2020. There's a census going on right now. Okay, so a census, if you're someone like the government or something like that, or, and you have access to the entire population, then you can go ask them your, your question, whatever you're interested in. But most of us don't have those kinds of resources. or Populations are typically big. So lots of times we can't get to the whole population. So what do we do? Well, we take a sample. Okay, a sample is a subset of that population that we hope will answer our question. We can use that sample to generalize about the population. A statistic, like we've already talked about, is some number that we calculate from our sample. Right? So statistics are associated with our sample. And statistics should be, if we have a good sample, a good representative sample, right? we'll talk about what that entails in the future, Right, but if we have a good sample, our statistics should be a pretty good reflection of our parameter. A parameter is a number that can be calculated or describes a population. Right, so statistics go with samples, parameters go with populations. So let's just quickly look at some other terminology. Right, usually we call the, the people or the things, the objects, the animals, whatever it is that are being studied, individuals. There are, there are some other things that they can be called their subjects, experimental units. Right? The characteristic of these individuals that we're interested in, we call our variable. The values of that variable are all the possible ways that variable could turn out. So therefore, our data is a collection of the values of these variables from these individuals in my sample from the population. All right, so that's kind of our flow there. And that's where our data comes from. All right, so that was just our basic terminology and stuff there. Um, we'll, we'll dive deeper into all of this in the future. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.